Hello and welcome back to my channel. This video is about principles of bookkeeping controls and today I'm going to talk about payroll transactions. Recording payroll is one of the purposes of the journal. I have listed down the purposes of the journal in my previous video which I have put the link in the description down below. In studying about the payroll, we may encounter payroll transactions recorded in two ways. The first is payroll transactions using wages and salaries control account. And the second is payroll transactions without using wages and salaries control account. And we will go through both of them. First, let's go through payroll transactions using wages and salaries control account. Before I show you an example, let's find out what is the wages and salaries control account. This is a liability account used to control the payroll transactions every period. All the payroll transactions go through this account and at the end of the period, the balance of this account will be zero. Keep in mind that it's not always called wages and salaries control account. It could be wages control account or salaries control account as well. Now let's go through the example. Below is the ABC Limited's payroll record of all employees for the month. ABC Limited maintains a wages control account. So we are given these figures and if you already finished your textbooks, you already know the meaning of these terms. But to help you understand what these figures are and how are they connected, I have created a diagram. Okay, I know it looks a little bit weird, but please bear with me, I will explain it to you. Let's start with the gross wages first. This whole yellow orange circle is the gross wages it is the amount earned by the employee for the work performed for the period the employees nic employees pension and payee is inside the gross wages in other words the amount of this tree is a part of the gross wages this three will have to be deducted from the gross wages. So when we take them out, the yellow part here will be the remaining amount, which is the net pay that the employee receives. So this gross wages figure is composed of four figures, employees NIC, employees pension, pay AYE, and net pay. But this gross wages is not the only payroll expense of the company in a period. On top of the gross wages are employers NIC and employer pension, which are additional cost to the company. They are on top because they are not part of the gross wages. So this whole blue space here is the total payroll expense of the company for the period, which consists of gross wages, employer's NIC, and employer pension. This is also the amount that goes to the wages control account and wages expense account. This PAYE here will go to the PAYE account. These two NICs will go to the NIC account. And these two pensions will go to pension account. Now let's go back to the example and let's create the journal entries. And we will use this diagram. First, let's find out the journal entry for wages expense. Remember, wages expense is the whole payroll expense of the company. Therefore, this will also be the amount in our wages control account. So let's go back to the diagram and we can see here that the wages expense consists of gross wages, employers NIC, and employer pension. So let's add those three. And we got 43,700. So let's put this amount 
in the wages expense debit and wages control account credit remember wages control account is a liability account that's why it goes to credit then let's transfer them to the general ledger always remember the dual effect first let's record in wages control account let's record in credit and for the details let's enter the opposite account which is wages expense then let's go to wages expense account let's enter in debit and then for the details, it's the opposite account, which is wages control account. Please take note that sometimes in the wages expense account, the gross wages, employer NAC, and employer pension are entered separately, but there won't be any problem as long as you know that the wages expense is composed of those three amounts. Next, let's record the journal entries for PAYE. The amount is 7840 so we will put it in debit in wages control and credit in payaye. Why do we record in credit payaye and debit wages control? Remember, I have mentioned earlier that wages control account will be zero out at the end of the period. So this amount will be removed from the wages control account. That's why we enter it to the opposite side which is debit and payye is a liability account which is credit so what happened here is from wages control account we take out this amount and move it to payye liability account let's take a look at them in the general ledger in wages control account let's enter in debit 7840 and the details is payye so this amount in debit will decrease this amount in credit and then in payye let's enter in credit and the details is wages control account next let's record the nic we will do the same we will record in debit wages control account and credit nic because nic is a liability account the amount is the total of employers NIC and employees NIC. So let's calculate them. Then let's record 6,640. Let's transfer them to the general ledger. First, let's go to wages control account. Let's record that amount in debit. And for the details, it's NIC. Again, this amount in debit will reduce this amount in credit. Then let's go to NIC account. Let's record in credit and the details, it's wages control account. Next, let's record the journal entry for pension. Let's record in wages control account and pension account the amount is the total of employer pension and employee pension so let's calculate then let's record the 3200 in wages control account in debit and credit in pension because pension is also a liability account then let's transfer them to the general ledger first let's enter in wages control account again it's debit and then let's enter the details pension again this amount in debit will reduce this amount in credit then let's go to pension account let's record in credit and the details is wages control account then let's record the last journal entry which is net wages let's record them to wages control account and bank to calculate the amount let's go back to our diagram and it should be the gross wages 
minus employees and IC, minus employees pension, and minus PAYE, the amount remaining is the net pay. So let's calculate them. Then let's enter it to debit, wages control, and credit, bank. Then let's transfer them to the general ledger. Let's go to wages control account first. Let's enter in debit. For the details, it's bank. Again, this amount will reduce this amount in credit. Then let's go to bank account. Bank account is an asset and we record it in credit because this amount here is the amount transferred from our bank to the employee's bank account so it reduces our bank account then let's enter wages control account in the details and now we're done in recording all the journal entries and transferring them to the general ledger let me just mention that pension is a liability account because this amount here in pension has to be paid to the pension provider. Also, PAYE and NIC are liability account because this amount here has to be paid to HMRC. Take note that sometimes PAYE and NIC are just in one account which is HMRC liability account. Also the balance of the wages control account should be zero. It means the total of the debit should be equal to credit. Next let's move on to payroll transaction without using the wages and salaries control account. Below is ABC Limited's payroll record of all employees for the month. Record the journal entries needed in the general ledger. These figures are the same figures that we used earlier, and we will record the journal entries without using wages control account. First, let's record the debit entry, and we know that expense account goes to debit. Since we are recording payroll transactions, our expense here is the wages expense. However, if we take a look at the options, we cannot see the wages expense. But we already know that the wages expense consists of three figures. So let's go back to our diagram. We can see that the wages expense here in blue consists of three figures, which are gross wages, employer's NIC and employer pension. So let's record those three figures in debit. Next, let's enter the liabilities in credit. We have HMRC, PAYE, HMRC, NIC and pension. The amount of PAYE is 7,840. For the NIC, is the total of employers and employees NIC. Which is 6,640. For the pension, it's the total of employer and employee pension. which is 3,200. And the last entry in credit is the bank. Please take note that sometimes you may see net pay instead of bank. It's the amount that is deducted from our bank by paying the employees, which is the net pay amount. And we already know how to calculate the net pay amount based on the diagram is the gross wages, minus employees NIC, employees pension, and pay AYE, and the remaining amount is the net pay.
then always double check that the total of the debit entry should be equal to the total of the credit entry. And that's it for today's video. For the next video, we will discuss about bank reconciliations. So if you want to watch more videos like this, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.